What's up everybody? I'm Brandon David, host of Investing in Cannabis. Uh, every once in a while, we're lucky enough to have a legend on this program. Uh, we've had a few so far, and uh, today's guest is no different, Ed Rosenthal. Uh, he's written and published over 25 books uh, about growing cannabis, and the ins and outs, the technicalities of that, really is thought of, of the thought leader in that space. His books are the gold standard. They're required reading at Oaksterdam. That's the uh, university that teaches you how to grow cannabis as well as some other business-related things. We'll have Oaksterdam on the show uh, at some point. Anyway, we went to his house last Saturday in, in, uh, in the East Bay here in Northern California, and it was a wild ride. Uh, despite my best intentions, he did not want to talk about cannabis. So I hope that today on Thanksgiving, uh, while you're enjoying your, your turkey, you have an extra big helping of Goofy on the side, because that's exactly what this episode is. It's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's really, really entertaining, super funny, and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching again, guys. I do this show for you. Uh, happy holidays. What's up, everybody? I'm Brandon David. This is Investing in Cannabis. Uh, we have uh, people that come to us now and kind of like ask us questions. They're, they're new patients. Uh, they're not quite sure about cannabis. Uh, and so we thought we, we would do an episode with a, a new patient, someone uh, that's interested in trying cannabis, and that's what we have. We have Ed here today. Hey, Ed, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. So I understand uh, that you have some limited experience with cannabis. Can, can you tell us about that? Well, uh, I had a headache about a month ago, and so a friend suggested that I try marijuana. And, you know, I had never tried it, even though friends had used it over the years, but I just wasn't interested. And besides, with the job that I had, with the drug testing and everything, mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. But uh, now I decided to try it. And so uh, my friend uh, had what he said was some very good good stuff. Yeah, and he got the good shit. Right? He, he, that, the good he shit. said he had good stuff yeah. and we, he put it in a pipe and I smoked a few pipefuls and then he gave me a candy and uh, nothing happened. I still had the headache. I, I, I took a, a, a Xanax and went to sleep and uh, <laughs> you know it was um, you know and when I woke up I didn't have the headache. So that was fine but uh, you know uh, I feel really safe here uh, with you guys, it's, it's kind of weird office that you have here. Yeah, there's, yeah it's yeah. kind of a strange set, set. for a but, TV show. But, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it, and you look like fine fellows, and what I'd like to do, uh, I'd like to try it again. I'd like to see what everybody's talking about. I don't, I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I have relatively limited experience, but yeah. I've talked to a lot of yeah. people yeah. Uh, that consume cameras, and apparently, you, have uh, you tried it? Have you fellows tried? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, they say it's okay. Yeah. So uh, may, maybe you should give it another shot. I, yeah. I'll try it now. How do I use this? Uh, so yeah, I think some of them have like holes. No, uh, that you no, this your, one doesn't have no a hole. holes. No. no holes. Okay. okay. So um, I think you just. Would, um, would you light it for me? Yeah, yeah. I could do that. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, um, I don't usually smoke, so I have to coordinate the. How lighting how long should I um, light it for? I don't know. You you tell me. I don't know about this. Do you know? I mean, like, okay, okay. okay. Let, let's, well, just, let's just try. It let's just try. We'll you know? see what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. Let's try. Yeah. Okay. What, what, does like? it? what does it feel like? Well, like? it's very smoky in my mouth. But do I inhale it? Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I mean, try it again. Are you addicted? No, every, everything's fine. Let's, let's try one more hit. Let's try one more. Yes. Okay, just one more. That's what they call it, a hit? Isn't that what they call it? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, well, let's, let's try let's again. Try let's one try one again. More. How did you get it to come out of your nose like that? That was crazy. Comes out. Just comes in, out. Goes in. Comes out like 
some uh, Clinton or something, didn't he inhale or something? I think he no, forgot to. He forgot to inhale. Yeah. Which apparently wow, is... Wow, this is really strange. <laughs> are, you, are you hallucinating at all? I've heard that this could be, you know, sort of psychotic, no? Well, I mean, you, you know, your ears are moving. Tell us what you're experiencing, if you can still speak. Yeah, I can speak. Are you able to blink? Oh, okay. So you still yeah, have I can the blink. Most sensory control. I just feel I have to watch you guys. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> This feels really weird. <laughs> I've heard that the more you smoke, um, that it actually gets more normal. That you feel. Should I try another one? I mean, maybe if you're comfortable with that. I don't. I don't want to overwhelm you. But um, try. Try again. Do you want me to help you yes. again? Okay. Okay. I think you're supposed to exhale too. That's that's a good part of it. Yeah. Oh yes, I have to breathe. <laughs> uh, I can't hold character anymore. <laughs> Ed Rosenthal, ladies and gentlemen, the incredible legend in the flesh. Uh, we're lucky enough sometimes on this show to get the legends. There's not many of them. But we've had a couple, and we're lucky enough again today. Uh, what are they talking about? Although this is only is Ed's this? Are you second experience English? with cannabis. Uh, he's English. <laughs> he's, he's written uh, over 25 books about the subject, uh, even though he, um, he doesn't consume it uh, until today, uh, which is incredible. Uh, stay, stay with us here. We're in his. I feel very sleepy. Amazing office here. Uh, it I seems feel very to be sleepy. Uh, from a different world. We're in Piedmont. Can't say that I've ever been to Piedmont before. Uh, but thanks for being here, Ed. If if you uh, can hear me, if you can understand. I can hear you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, tell us about. Uh, your office here. There, there's so many beautiful, wonderful artifacts. I don't know where I am. I've never been here before. Uh, do you have GPS? We could check. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Mr. Rosenthal, I understand that uh, you've dodged the draft in the past and I'm very curious how you feel, how you want to explain to the good people um, that you're, you're not a patriot and why, why you chose to, uh, to circumvent your duty as a citizen. I did my duty as a citizen by avoiding war. All citizens who are not traitors have a duty not to go to war if your country is not threatened. Nobody's threatening the United States. Come back home. No one is threatening the United States. No. If all the American soldiers came back home and went, left all of their foreign bases, nobody would threaten the United States. Hmm. Hmm. What about domestic concerns? Are there any threats at home? Yeah, the right wing, like McVeigh and those people, they're terrorists. And they haven't been recognized as terrorists, but they are. And there's a good contingent of, large contingent of them in the army. Um, should we have like an organization that certifies people as terrorists? How does, that, how does one get recognized as a terrorist? Well, the first thing we could look at, at is PTSD and police and get rid of all of the cops who are 
should not be carrying guns. Mm. That's, so maybe that's number a, one. Demilitarize the police. Yes. Let's start at home first, and then let's bring. Well, I have this. Okay, so I have this program that uh, <laughs> I, I'll tell you about. Welcome it. back. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you about this program. <laughs> so, you know, um, the the last really great thing that Obama did was his inauguration. Okay. And you know, his inauguration. I don't know if you recall the first inauguration, but. You know, I'm pretty was, sure Jay-Z and Beyonce were there. But, uh, but uh, it was really cross-cultural. I mean, there were folk singers there, there was hip-hop, there was jazz, there was... It, it showed the breadth of American culture. And I thought that was pretty good. And so I had this idea that, you know, there are American troops in 130 countries. Mm. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. There are like 200 countries or something, and 130 of them have either American troops or some sort of American military aid. So what I thought is that we should start getting out of all of these countries. And what we would do is get out of these countries one country a week. You know, you could start with the small countries and so you get training in how to get out and then just move out like but ed what about our no, let me geopolitical finish. let me finish so leverage so yes i'm going to get into this 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 shows how we can do it and for every country that we get out of mm -hmm. we have a lottery where the like uh the 200 the uh 130 biggest american cities are all put in this lottery and and each week, one is uh, some, each week one is drawn out of the lottery, and what happens is that they, since closing the base is going to be an economic such an economic benefit, in each case, what we're going to do is have a celebration in that city, much like the inauguration. But it will feature, a lot of it will be the talent from the city, and it will have artists, and there will be const new construction for it, and there will be plays. Like Burning Man. Sort of like, a, it will be a one-week fest, it will be a one-week festival that is all filmed, you know, or a three-day festival that's all filmed and goes out internationally. And what we're going to have... So once a week, we have a three-day festival in a different country. In a different city. In a different city. city. in the United States, as we close the base in the other country. Oh, but the, the country, party's not in that country. The, they'll party themselves when the, when when the American leave. troops yeah. leave. Yeah. <laughs> they'll have a big party. They'll have their own, they'll have their own party. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> my my but, British friends say... But this is the, our cultural offensive. So what we're going to be doing is showing the best of the United States, not the military, and this will be broadcast all over the world, and it will galvanize the world for 130 weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like more than two years, <laughs> or maybe we'll do it every other week, get it going over a four-year period, where every other week there's this, the base gets closed, we could have you know, there'd be a big thing about how the base is closing, and then there'd be this big celebration. And, and so in each of these cities, it, billions of dollars would come into each city mm. over the per period of time, which would just spark a cultural renaissance everywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. And every state would have, every sta state would be affected. And what uh, values, what pieces of society do you help change as a result of this uh, newfound festivity? Well, I, I have this new program. Uh, it's called Make Peace, Not War. And that's what it's about. It's a cultural offensive. Mm. So we're trying to be offensive culturally. Mm. So what it is, is to show the, the breadth of American culture and the best of American culture and celebrate all parts of it. Mm -hmm. So all, all ethnicities, all different styles and, uh, and respect for people. And 
That, so that's, that's my cultural offensive. And also, it wouldn't only feature music, it would be, you know, there'd be uh, visual, art, visual arts, plays, literature, uh, and music would be, uh, you, uh, they'd actually, you know, uh, uh, we would actually solicit music and, and just a new culture. And what is culture. Uh, cannabis's role? in the cultural offensive. I asked you how many books you, you've written, 25? No, 30? I don't think, I don't think, I think in the low 20s. I don't in know. In the low 20s. I mean, I haven't written all of them. You know, some of the books that some are here, edited, I, right? yeah, I've either edited or just, or just published. Oh, just published. Okay. Some, some of them like Sex Pot. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, after all this time, you, is there anything left to, to write? Well, I'm writing a, a book, book about harvesting, okay. and I'm writing book, uh, uh, two books about varieties. One's called Greatest Hits, a big book of buds. And Which I love. I have that you. book, the, volume three. I have it. Yeah. Home. Well, Who that, takes the, the pictures for that? Because the photography is well, amazing. Well, the, the um, photos of the varieties are submitted by the by the um, uh, by the breeders, but the photos of the in the articles I I've taken up to now I've taken a lot of them, but um, and that's you, th that's the articles in between the varieties, and uh, and then we get other photographers and more and more I depend on uh, other photographers. There was, they used to. There used to be very few photographers doing this work, yeah. and now there are some really great photographers. And I'd rather give people the best photography rather than just having it be mine. It seems that there's still, uh, at least to me, a big opportunity for photography, though, because I order uh, cannabis online yes. pretty, pretty frequently, and I'm shocked by some of the very low-quality photos that are supposed to appease me to click buy. Uh, okay. I wonder why that is. Well, it's it's hard to photograph pot well. Is it? It is. Yes. Okay. It's not easy because uh, unlike a, a flower like a lily, for instance, or another flower, which has, uh, or these chrysanthemums here, where the petals are solid. Um, here, can I get one of those? Please? Yeah. Yeah. So. Here, the petal is solid, so you can focus on, you know, on the petal and make make a uh, some sort of compromise or, on depth of field. But with a with a bud, it's much more. It, it can, especially when it's growing, it can be a lot more ephemeral. So it's hard to decide how how to actually photograph or it. Or when to photograph it, right? Well, you can photograph it at any time, but. You, you photograph it when it looks good. <laughs> mm. Mm. It doesn't have to be right. Mm. People like to see see it growing as well, but it's it's a question of getting that photography right. Mm -hmm. yes. Got it. And why why did you write your first book? Why why did you decide that this was a, a good thing to do? Well, I had met. Uh, uh, what year are we talking about first? So paint the, uh, set the scene here for us. It, it was uh, 19, probably 1971, and Rolling Stone, well, first of all, I had decided to grow, to develop these little uh, grow tents for, for growing pot, to develop those. And it was a little before, before the time for that. But that's what I was okay. working on, and uh, at the same time, there was this there was this uh, Rolling Stone, which was relatively new at that time. Rolling Stone magazine, mm -hmm. they had uh, for different cities, they had the, these inserts, these supplements that were local, and it, I was living in New York at the time, and they had. Uh, an article on how to grow pot by this fellow, Mel Frank. And at the same time, I was trying to get publicity, free publicity in Rolling Stone for my grow tents. Uh, uh, and um, 
my the co my co uh, and so they said, "Would you like to meet this fellow?" And I said, "Yeah," and we met, and we decided to write a book together on how to grow pot, and that became that fellow became the co-author of uh, the Marijuana Growers Guide series, mm. and he's still active in it. He, Which he, is required reading. At Amsterdam, correct? No, that's uh, that was my first series. The, okay. the second series, Marijuana Growers Handbook series, uh, is uh, is it, it is that's the one that um, is most uh, that's used as a college text. And when I wrote uh, Grower's Guide with Mel Frank, it said uh, there was a review in the New York Times, and it said that. When marijuana becomes uh, uh, by Sakhalov, uh, who did the review, and he said that when marijuana becomes a, a becomes legal, that this will be a textbook for a common weed. Mm. And uh, as a matter of fact, Marijuana Grower's Handbook, the second series, is a college textbook. Wow! So, wow! He was <laughs> right. right. He was right. University. Yeah, sure. Here. Right here, I'll show you. Yeah, grab it. Says it. See, right, right there. It says it right there. O Oaksdam University. And when New York Times does a review on you, yeah, well, do you know that. ahead of time, or uh, it's a surprise? Well, it, it only it only happened once. Uh, I'm fascinated by um, your own cannabis consumption habits. It's probably my favorite thing to talk to guests about. Oh, I. I I rarely use it when I'm sleeping. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. I either I, I, I make sure to either uh, consume canvas on a weekday or a weekend. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Same same yeah. regimen for you. Yeah. 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 Especially um, uh, uh, any kind of uh, twenty four hour period that ends in a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like two th steps. There's also like like different kinds, right? Like there's oh, days or what? Uh, Are we talking about no, days? No, every day or? is the same for me. Oh. But uh, no, I'm talking about uh, cannabis. Oh, cannabis That's days? That's the right word, right? Cannabis. Is that one 24-hour period in which you use cannabis as a cannabis day? Well, then that's just called the day for oh. me. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> you just shortened it. I just shortened it. Yeah. Just to, it's assumed. Yeah. The sun is up. Yeah. It's a cannabis day. What if, what if you, what if, you woke up before the sun was up. Would you wait till the sun? I don't. Got up? I don't do that. Oh. Well, would you consider that the other day? I do. I actually, Previous I day? I consider uh, the end or start of a new day by my sleeping pattern. So I don't give a shit about the man. The and they've hour told hour us period, that about stuff. no, no, no. Because if I don't sleep for two days, yeah, that's all one fucking day for me. That's you know? one day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to drive with you when you don't sleep for two days. I don't drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you drive? Yeah. Why? Why do I drive? Yeah. Well, how or why? Would you rather... Because... I didn't know there was different ways to drive. Uh, I didn't say there was. You said how do you drive. I well, want to know both how and why you drive. And where and when. Do you have a little form for me to fill out? Or um, I don't. I don't use paper. No, rolling papers. But um, I actually so can't write either. I'm, my penmanship is. Uh, I'm devoid well. I mean, of it could, you could email me the form, or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I could do text that. Text it to me, or something. I could do that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have Snapchat? You know, I do have Snapchat, but uh, do I don't use. It. Yeah. <laughs> I use it when I'm out of the country. <laughs> because? Uh, because it doesn't cost anything. Snapchat. Yeah. Snapchat's free in the U.S. too. That's right. That's why I use it when I'm out of the country. Because in the country, you know, the telephone is free anyway. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Like when I'm in another country, I use Facebook Messenger. Because you can't text, you know, because it's more expensive. That's what you mean, yeah. Where's your favorite place in the world besides Piedmont? 
favorite place? Well, I like the Himalayas a lot. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And I was really fascinated by China because like in 20 years or 30 years, they took a rural agrarian country and made it into a modern mm. middle class culture. Mm. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, we're trying to do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> How's the food in China? Wow. Oh. Mm. Well, first of all, it's, you know, I've been to both India and China, and in in India, you, each time that you choose a restaurant, you have to go through, you know, sort of a checklist. Does this place look like it's clean? Did they safe? email you the checklist? What? Did they email you the checklist? No, no, I, no. I in your head, oh, you know, yeah, you go through. Checklist. Don't you go through a checklist? Should I eat in this restaurant? Sometimes, in the U.S. I mean, you know, do I want like the food? Would I like the food? Does it look clean? You know, does it? You know, oh, it has a C rating. Maybe I shouldn't eat there. You know, uh -huh. something like that. Well, in, how in, does that work? Do you know how the uh, no, the scores but, work? I don't know. Because I'm very but in India, about in India, you know, when you when you decide if you're if you're not familiar with a restaurant, mm -hmm. you want to go through this mental checklist of is this food going to make me sick? Mm. You know, that's the ultimate mm -hmm. thing. And in China, it everything's immaculate. I mean, it is very clean. Mm -hmm. You know, it is it is. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about getting sick you can, and things like that. And the other thing about it is that the food is abundant and uh, oh, exquisitely tasty. I, I, I long for, uh, to go, you know, for that food that was mm. great. I, is there much cannabis in China? I did not experience any um, pot run. None. Right. Huh. And no discussion of it either. Um, I was with a group of business people and it would have been inappropriate to mm. discuss that. Mm. Yeah. So is there still a taboo associated with, with cannabis? Is there still environments it doesn't belong in? Only in only noose wise. In the news. Noose. Noose. No okay. noose is good news. No. Like, you hang yourself with. No. Yeah, because no else hangs is a you. good. That's true. Well, yeah, but you could use a noose. Yeah, that's yeah, very but, dark, but, but we're, ta we're talking about you. At, I'm answering your question. Only, only noose wise. That's how they want to deal with it. In China. Oh, I just shit in my pants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. I do. So they, well, maybe that, maybe I was totally incorrect. Should I try, uh, should I imitate being shot or, you know, like by firing squad? Maybe we should do that. Maybe uh, like lethal I don't injection because you're um, afraid of needles. Well, that, I don't think they practice torture. You don't think? I don't think that they practice torture. I mean, like in executions because they want to preserve the body parts. Oh. You know, they don't want to poison you because they're going to sell the body parts. Okay. Right? I didn't realize that there was a Kidneys, by liver, the lungs, heart. What do you need? Probably lungs. What do you need? We execute, we execute to, you know, like custom. You need a heart? What, just give us your blood types and your, you know. On demand organs? Is yeah. that what you're proposing? No, Is no. Start up? I'm not proposing that. That's what goes on in China. Can we actually. deliver it? No, they deliver it. I'm serious. Yeah, no, I'm serious too. On-demand well, organs, I think. Well, that's you thing. you can get into it. I'm not really interested. But oh. I'm just suggesting that I don't want to become part of the, like stock in that trade. Oh, what does that the, mean? What stock, stock in trade? that trade? Like my organs. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't want to be part of the inventory. That's no, not, right. That's, it's not good. It's right. Not, how about when you die? Are you going to donate your organs or no? You you want them for yourself? Why? What would I do with them? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's I, I'm a donor, uh, and I often you see, wonder. You know why I donate blood? You said you don't donate blood. No, you said you don't. <laughs> I I you didn't do say donate that. Blood. I didn't say that. But you know why I donate blood? 
Why? I like to see people get high. That's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm. What if you, can, that'd be cool if you could get high from blood transfusion. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Really? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? A new way to that get high. Like now he's going to go into blood yeah. transfusion. <laughs> that sounds like a business to me. We could have like a cool like bar. We could have hipsters there. They could drink the blood. Yeah, huh? no, no, not drink it. No, you just you come for a. a we get a different. A cleanse. We get, we get a different a kind of cleanse. people at the bar, depending on whether it's a transfusion or. The so drink. we're making a joke, but I guarantee you there are people that would go for cannabis blood transfusions. In Las Dabbing Vegas. Dabbing just isn't enough, man. In Las it's Vegas. You could do it in Las Vegas. Well, you can do anything in Las Vegas. Yeah, right. But it wouldn't stay there. You were just in Vegas, Yeah, you? yeah. How I didn't it? do anything. How was it? What do you mean you didn't do okay. anything? You went to Vegas. Yeah. Did you like I ate it? in a buffet. Oh, where? One of the hotels? The Rio buffet. How was it? It was okay. It was, do you like it was very conven- Well, it was very convenient. Because you could eat, you could eat pretty quickly. There wasn't a line. Uh, the food was okay. But that's your third priority that the food was. Okay. No, no, no. That's that's like a you know. Uh, if you can't eat the food, everything else doesn't matter. Doesn't right. That's it? what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Buffets. Yes. I just happened to mention in no specific order. Oh, I see. I see. Just a list. Yeah. Just a list. Well, I do like convenient things, uh, but the quality of the food is, is number one, right? Do right. you care how your food looks? Some people are very into like uh No, I, tra- I tend to grind all my food in a blender. Like I put the I steak that. and the, yeah. the, the pizza. chicken, the pizza. pizza, the broccoli, and you know all the vegetables and everything, and then I put some soy milk in, grind it up, and you know, that's well, it. let's just skip that step, and let's do uh, blood transfusions. You could you just don't have to blend anything up. We'll just I, give it. To I you. think that what maybe what we should do is bypass our the, hearts. No, the th- the the throat area, and just like inject food right into the intestinal system directly. But then so, you pass your your you, taste so, buds. So right, that's yeah. the best part. No, people wouldn't have to waste time. You know, eating. I don't think of eating that as a waste or drinking. Of time. See, or what I want like to do. They could work you can full take care time. Of, I don't want to they go to the could, bathroom. They wouldn't anymore. have to. They wouldn't you can have take to. Take care of that. They would. Well, probably we wouldn't. Ha- probably they wouldn't have to go to lunch. No, but you know, they, they could you work must full go time. To lunch. No, they could work you full. They, they don't have to go to lunch. Not if like at specific feeding time, you press a button and the stuff goes in. You know, they're fed. Sort of like they do geese that they're trying to make pate from, you know. You like pate? Uh, that's not. That's we're not talking about that. We're talking about. <laughs> what are we the, talking? We're talking about the automatic feeding tube for humans, <laughs> that that you've wanted to do all your life. I do. I want that. <laughs> yeah. I want to have that. You and know, because also it, eat. It, it makes Soylent, it makes Soylent look. You know, like, what do you think? Tell us your thoughts on. Soylent. Well, well, I think that as compared with automatic. Intestinal feeding, Soylent is is Antibiotic. back in the 21st yeah. century, wow. in early 21st century, yeah. and we have to move on from that. Drinking something that's just like it's so, so it's inefficient. So, it's so 20th century, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. You know they did that in the 19th century too. They they what? drank, you know, like liquids. It's crazy. Instead of getting it intestinally, it's hard to believe. You know what's hard for me to believe is that we, we drink water. That's right. Because, like, we need water so much. Why hasn't someone just figured out a way to keep us hydrated? You know, I need, like, I'm a pump, you. right? I need a pump, like That's a That's right. Ex- exactly. And that yes. is what the intestinal pump does. It, it's an automatic hydrating because it's measuring the amount of water in your system. And it keeps How it level it at cost? all times. What, what's the it's MSRP only on an intestinal? It's only $250,000. To get Ten it easy payments yes. of twenty five thousand dollars. That's right. And is there any financing options available? Or? Yes, there are. Okay. Yeah, there are. You could you could stretch it out over a hundred payment period. 
So it's only 2,500 plus interest. So this is only. a lease for the rest of your life, no, basically. No, it's huh? ten, eight, to eight to ten years. Uh. And then um, uh, and then there's is the main interest. Is there interest like a mortgage? Or? Well, it's sort of, yeah. We okay. take it back if, if you don't make it. It's very, it's very rough because... Can we combine I'm sad those? to say that we have not been able to train doctors can, can to we remove those these. So we have had to or? use, uh, you know, did you ever see that uh, bail uh, guy, dog? The bounty hunter. Yeah, we use him to repossess these. Oh. Okay. So he comes to your house <laughs> and rips the intestinal pump out of you. If you're delinquent, no, his on wife. Your his wife has learned how to She's remove. She's scary. Them. She has learned how to. Re he just holds you down. He sits on your face. Not exactly, but <laughs> he holds you down, and she removes it, and then they. How is uh, it patch done? It back if up. I lay down, could you show I, me? I, I don't know exactly. I okay. haven't seen the uh, okay. videos on that, but okay. here's the thing: Pe we haven't had one one person who has missed payments. And the thing is that people love it so much. You know, there, I should tell you that there is a $150 a week maintenance fee, which includes all the food yeah, right. and water. And all yes. of our water is purified water that has been deionized and also has uh, been alkalinized. So you're getting the exact pure water that your body needs with, uh, with our intestinal uh, mix. Do you like pizza? I love pizza. Well, I'll tell you what. You're going, it goes into the intestine, but you're going to taste it on your really? tongue. Really? Yes. Yes. How is that possible? I, I have to tell you that we have developed a way that you will actually taste the food that's going into your intestine, and you won't have to chew it. It saves your teeth. That's incredible. Because, you know, your teeth I grind feel, down. I feel that When I, they have that constant food thing, they grind down. I and that's why old constant people... constant energy. You see, here, let me take this every out. You day. see? Here, look at, look, look at my uh, the teeth your, that I've had to replace. And you put it in your collectible yeah, Andy Warhol I've, uh, I've had to replace. Uh, ashtray? Does that yeah. come with the system? No, no. Oh, okay. uh, but I've had, you know, to replace my teeth three times because your teeth wear down. Unless you, and this saves your teeth. You can go through life with one set of teeth this way. Well, two sets, your juvenile set and the second set, which I presume you have now. We don't need teeth, though. That, well, under, under you do for system. talking. Yeah. We do? Yeah, to teeth make a tea. To for a tea. 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 Yeah, tea. you see, yeah. You need the teeth for tea. the tea. You see, yes. Okay. Here, let me just read this letter. Um, do you mind? No, no. If someone that has, has written in? Yeah. Testimonial? Yes. Okay. Deerintestine.com. Wow. Johnny, I'm so glad that you introduced me to this. I'm so much more efficient now and have gotten so much more work done over the just the last week. Just think, I saved 20 minutes three times a day, an hour a week, and you know I do work seven days a week, so this gave me an additional seven hours, which is almost an, uh, a complete working day for the normal person, which of course I'm not, because you know I work 12 hours a day. So once again, I'd like to thank you, and I am very interested in your sleep aid, which I understand you will be importing from Japan, which allows you to get eight hours sleep in only five hours. That extra three hours will certainly make me more efficient and a more lovable person. Thank you once again, Johnny, and I hope to hear from you soon. Wow. Ed Rosenthal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you didn't like that episode, uh, I apologize. I know it's a little lighter on the cannabis informative side, a little heavier on the, uh, the goofy fun side, but it certainly was a cool experience going out there and meeting with him, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever have another guest quite like Ed, and I thank him for that. And uh, hey, thanks again for watching, guys. You can find us anywhere that uh, content is consumed on the interwebs. So uh, investingincannabis.tv, that's our website. Uh, at Cannabis Pod on Twitter and on Instagram. I think we're getting a Snapchat together, but uh, not sure about that yet. And uh, again, thanks for watching, guys. We do this show exactly for people like you, and uh, I'll see you next time.